Let's start episode two of fixing up this 67 Mustang Fastback. In the previous episode, I mentioned that we were about to work on the steering column and the uh, instrument pod, but I'm gonna put that off for a little bit. Instead, let's devote this episode to getting the carpet out, looking at the steel floors, finding out what's going on in there and get those all fixed up. And then in a future episode, I'll deal with those other items like the uh, instrument panel. So with any car project like this, for me, the most important thing is to stop the aging, stop the rust if there is any, and then uh, do whatever is necessary to keep it from happening again. So I'm shocked at these at these floors, how nice they are. This is this is the original steel, and you know the car was originally Wimbledon white. That's why this is white. But I was expecting to have, well, I didn't see any from underneath, but I was expecting to see some bad news when I came in here. But if you look at this sheet metal where that seam is, you know, this is a part right here that spot welds to this part, which is kind of the firewall piece. These two, this is a classic location for, for rust because water settles down there, but there just really isn't any. That's the um, what was seam sealer, which I've chiseled out. It really, I just took it out with a flat bladed screwdriver because it wasn't really very well bonded after all these years or sound deadening, whatever they called it back then. But so I'm working my way to remove anything that's a little bit loose, and then I've, I'm gonna, you know, wire brush and a Scotch Brite pad, and then I'll go through that process with the. Um, POR15, the degreaser, and then the, um, the metal prep to etch the surface. I'll do all of that before I end up putting on POR15 on this surface. And same thing for the passenger side as well. So here's the passenger side. I've also stripped this down. I still have a little bit more work to do. But even though you do see a little bit of iron oxide, a little bit of rust, it's just surface rust. And this is this is all very solid. And the same problem area that normally would be problem areas, like that corner and this corner, just not not an issue. Or this, this seam, this welded seam right here. So I'm amazed, very pleased with that. That's the way it looked from underneath. But you know, I did not pull the carpet up before I bought the car. So I was just counting on my exterior inspection. But so I'll do the same thing on this side as well. Oh, the other thing I'm gonna do is um, use this. I've used this product before in some of my previous videos. You might've seen it, Eastwood's uh, Inside Out. It's a inside frame rail paint. You take this can which is just aerosol, and it's got a flexible nozzle. And what I'll do with that is I'm gonna use it in two places. One, these sills are captive. You know, it's a hollow uh, cross section there. <clears throat> so there are a couple, of, a couple of holes where I can get in here, right in here. I can, um, and I might do it from the underside as well, to spray the inside of that cavity. Also, this, this, I pulled out a plug right here, and that allows me to get to this box beam. There's a boxed in channel under there. It's hard to see, that right there. So I'll be able to also spray in that channel. I can also use that hole right there to get a lot of spray inside that box, just to make sure that it, um, is coated from the inside. So I'll do that on both sides. And that should do a good job of arresting any future uh, rust opportunities. Not my first time doing this, so I've learned that that cord, that uh, hose, it wants to curl back up. 
and it comes out of the box curled up so you can't keep it from being curled. So I took a coat hanger and taped it to the coat hanger so that way I can get that, that nozzle. It's got a four port squirt nozzle on the end of that to keep that nozzle where I want it to go. So the product I just used was the uh, cleaner degreaser for um, the POR15. I just happened to put it in an old bottle that I had that said Griot's wheel cleaner, but I was not using wheel cleaner on the floors. Now I'm about to use this metal prep, which is also part of a three-part kit. Degreaser, metal prep, which is like an etching acid and then I'll apply the pour 15. So this is the metal prep and I'm supposed to keep the surface wet with this for about 15 or 20 minutes and then wash it off. So I'll let this work and then I'll wash it off after about 20 minutes. So even though I had gone to the effort of painting and treating the areas most likely to have rust, 
I decided to go ahead and take all the carpet out and replace it. So I've ordered new carpet, new backing, new uh, sound deadening. So, and the rest of this floor looks fine. Even it's kind of you know ugly looking, but this is just manufacturing adhesive and and seam sealer. But there's no rust to speak of. A little bit of maybe surface rust there, but nothing nothing to worry about here at all. So I'll clean all of this very carefully and paint it all black and uh, with uh, with a good rust-oleum or or some type of um, maybe 415 I haven't decided so and then I'll put all the new carpet in and it'll be beautiful and it'll smell better too you know I love nostalgic things and I think about this car built back in 67 this was actually built in early 67 instead of 66 and yeah i look at these all these little marks these witness marks and these are these are handprints from the person that put this car together or the people they might have been wearing gloves they might not but you know they obviously put in this seam sealer which ended up getting a little bit of um paint after they painted it but uh you know these are all fingerprints from the guys that were building this car. I, I don't think this carpet has ever been out. Uh, when I took this carpet out, I found nuts and bolts that were brand new Ford hardware that was installed, that was just laying in the floor and they just put the carpet over it. You know, I can almost see the guys working on the car back at that time. And they just didn't clean up everything before they, threw the carpet down. So anyway, very original, really a time capsule. So there are two camps to the technique for installing things like Dynamat. Uh, one camp, and you see it all the time, is to cover every square inch of an interior of a car without it missing even a little bit. And that's okay, certainly that'll work, that'll work just fine. Um, I subscribe to the other camp, which is you don't need to cover every square inch, you really just need to cover about 60 or 70 percent of the surface at the most because it's really about resonance, it's about panel resonance. And you just need to hit the flat areas, not the corners, not the interior corners, just the uh, flat areas where the panels would resonate sound. So I go with that. And also, I, I didn't have a lot of Dynamat left, so I also uh, was a little bit short. So I did the panel, the uh, second technique, and, I, and I'm, I'm sure it's going to be just fine. This joint where the floor metal comes together with the firewall metal. There was nothing wrong with that. There was no rust, but I did dig out all the um, seam sealer that was there from the factory just to make sure I could get the uh, POR15 to penetrate down in there. So now I'm going to put back seam sealer I got from Eastwood. It's black and I'll also do the same thing to the uh, to the driver's side.
So this material is called Cool It. It's not a sound deadening uh, uh, product. It is a temperature barrier product. So I just had some left over from a previous project and I know the um, exhaust pipes are right there below the floor. So I'm using that for that purpose. So this is the new carpet going in. It looks a little bit dirty because I had put the old carpet on top of it to use as a template to cut out some uh, holes. So, but it's all going to vacuum up and look beautiful when it's done. So that concludes our episode about the interior carpet and floor. The next episode will be about restoring the rear fold-down seat area.